and now that we had a, a place where we could get together and shoot ideas off of each other and have a place that we called like home it was the lion's den you know it was like where we we, we kicked our feet up we got our work done we planned we strategized and then we went and executed what's going on over here i was trying to get the coffee cup to, <laughs> to like come off and it wouldn't come off <laughs> i'm just trying to pour it <laughs> it wouldn't come off i'm sorry <laughs> I'm only gonna pe- keep part of that, and we'll be so, fine. So, do you you keep a coffee pot next to your cup? Is that what the the theory is here? You don't just drink out of this one. Well, this is a new concept for me here, since I'm like actually produce like. You're in front of the in camera. front of the camera now. This is very <laughs> different for me. Okay, this is a whole new thing. You know, there's um, there's there's kind of a niche on uh, like Instagram with that, where people will sing while they make drinks, and evidently it's. Uh, it's something that everybody wants to watch for whatever reason. I'm like, why don't you just sing? <laughs> yeah, just get on stage, sing, <laughs> sing in the car. I get in the car and sing all the time. <laughs> it's I mean, a great time. Not pretty. Um, yeah, so I was going to discuss uh, some of those first customers, um, you know, kind of how, you, I guess comparatively, it's it's a very different um, approach mm. to than how I would do it because you were approaching customers saying, hey, this is something you need. Mm-hmm. I was wanting to do it from the same capacity and say, this is something you need, sure. But it was a tougher sell because they didn't know they needed it mm-hmm. ever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, you know, home, you know, you have a home, you have a roof, you probably should fix that every so often. Mm-hmm. That's more just a generalized, yeah, I guess. Mm-hmm. But mine was like, hey, your logo looks like shit. I need to fix it because I know I can. Yeah. Here's my concept. I sketch it on a napkin. Take it. You like it? Cool. Give me money. (laughs) Give me money. That was the generalized approach. (laughs) Uh That was not the way to go, obviously. Now it's like, okay, now I have to actually say, you know, why is this new approach, the new logo approach, this new marketing approach going to be something that's going to benefit your business instead of something that just like, oh, it looks pretty. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. (laughs) It's so exciting. (laughs) You know, you want to be a little more... um, analytical than that like Mm -hmm. honestly again i i suck at math i'm really really bad at math but now i'm an analytics guy like i look at the numbers and i'm like ooh, mm, that is those numbers are looking good yeah you know and i just never used to be that Mm -hmm. and now like as a business owner having been doing this for 12 plus years i'm like well let's see how your logo is doing for you analytically on your website let's check it out oh your numbers look really bad we should probably fix a few things Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, it changes your your delivery. Yeah, you know, it changes your sales approach because now it's it's not just hey, you need this. It's hey, you need this, and here's why. Right, you're giving some actual dedicated understanding as to why this person needs this solution. Yeah, a hundred percent. And um, I guess to kind of scale into that, you know, so I had a team that I was working with when we were uh, going after this first client. You know, I had a tech guy, so like he's the guy that helped with making the website. Um, we had another person helping us to just like generalize marketing posts for like social media and then me kind of just doing uh, the actual like logo approach and saying, Hey, here's, you know, illustrator and we get in there and actually like make it all pretty, you know, pixel pushing Mm -hmm. is what they call it. (laughs) Um, so we were doing that. Yes, indeed. Um, but we were doing that and we had this whole team and, you know, I don't talk to any of those people anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, the issue I think... And I don't think it was motivation. It it wasn't that per se because I think they just wanted different things. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, my tech guy, he wanted to go do and sell, you know, a bunch of websites and like back end weird deep, like, I don't know, just like deep Amazon shit, mm-hmm. you know, like, oh, let's build an a- AWS server and do this. I'm like, yeah, I mean, that's cool. I mean, th- th- it has its values. It does. Yeah. Not what I want to do. I yeah. want to make logos look good. I want to make brands look pretty. Yeah. Build legacies for businesses was really my approach. Um, you know, so I think that was kind of like figuring out that growth for my team and understanding like what's going to work for that. Yeah. So I ended up, um, you know, graduating from high school. You know, those people kind of all ducked. I had one, the tech guy actually stayed. He was the one that stuck around, which was surprising. Um, but he stayed around. Then we moved up to uh, kind of the Denver market and started to approach uh, clients up there and just be like, oh, hey, film festivals. And we're like, oh, that's fun, you know, kind of creative. And we started doing some more video work Mm -hmm. for a few other clients. Um, So that was kind of evolution of the business. We went from just not from just logos into video, which was more expensive because cameras (laughs) cost a a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So that was fun. Um, 
not for a kid that was working at Starbucks, though. Yeah. You know, part-time. You know, it's over here. Like, okay, so I'm trying to start a business, but, like, Starbucks, uh, you know, doesn't pay that much. <laughs> well, it kind of does now. I think it's, like, seventeen twenty-five an hour. Oh, shit, really? Or something like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the only issue with Starbucks is they have swapped CEOs, like, five times mm-hmm. since I've worked there. It's a little weird, right? Yeah. It's Why do you need to do that? Well, you need to drive more profit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but here's the thing. <laughs> the founder was CEO two times in that intermittent eight years that I've been in the Starbucks loop since yeah, I have their shares. Maybe they're all drinking too much coffee, getting I too guess. many good ideas, and they're just changing their mind. I don't know, man. Yeah. It's, it's a little wild, but <laughs> <He's> hey. <laughs> coffee. Yeah. As no, I'm drinking it. No, but to speak to, to speak to what you said about the team, the initial team, I, I, you know, we've seen – J.D. was actually mentioning that before about – you know, we've seen some expansion, and then we've seen some a little regression, and then further expansion, a little regression, and that is all, that's automatically going to happen in the growth of an organization because you find out, well, one, you know, the core people that are there, um, are you fundamentally grounded on the same principles? Um, are your vi- is your vision unanimous? Is it in sync, or isn't? Is it not? Are you working for two different ends? Um, and on top of that, do you even really like to be around each other? Because you have to spend a lot of time with the people that you work with, right? And so you have to be able to build a culture between you guys where it's understood. We're looking at the same thing. We want the same stuff. Plus, we don't mind the idioc- idiosyncrasies that are not aligned between the two of us. Just like in a you know your home life with your with your family and stuff like that. It's like yeah. you got to learn how to adapt to idiosyncrasies, and sometimes that that is a killer of organizations. Right? And it, it essentially was honestly. So <coughs> as I was saying, we went into the Denver market. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're working with some film festivals up there and a few other um, just localized clients. Um, but we ended up meeting another people, uh, another set of people that were kind of, kind of doing some something similar, but more a little more video focused. And we're like, oh, we really like what you're doing. Mm-hmm. We really like this. Oh, this is great. So we start hanging out with them, you know, talking business, chatting shit, and whatnot, and things were going great. And we decide, okay, this is this is an ideal situation where I think we could merge. Mm-hmm. So we merge companies. Oh yeah. At eighteen, I had had my first company merger. Oh, nice. Yeah. Which was wild. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but I still will hold that as a high accreditation for myself because one. We figured out all the logistics and paperwork to make sure it was 100% legal. It all went down, no problems. Yeah. Super silk smooth until, <laughs> until, <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's the, it's the bad part. Um, we found out uh, that, well, one, they had a completely different um, motivation behind the business. I'll get to that in a sec. Uh, but they wanted to do more real estate focused uh, videos. And I was I was over here like, marketing logo guy i'm like guys like branding branding it's more important you know we got to have people build their uh, companies so they can have like legacies i get it the you know the real estate clients they're going to pay more sure that's great but i want to keep doing what we were kind of getting after i thought that's why you guys you know did this why we did this in the first place uh yeah they didn't like that at all and so they ousted me (laughs) like within like the first two weeks after we merged they ousted me wow and i they're, they're like I forget who it was, but one of them was like, hey, I hear some rumblings mm-hmm. that they're going to get rid of you. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> this is my business. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> so heard the rumblings and then basically confirmed that it was going to happen. And then I packed up my desk and I just wasn't there the next day. Yeah. Like my desk, we had an office and everything. Mm-hmm. It was just gone. Yeah. Like there was no more desk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the desk, all the things, all the cameras, all the extra shit that I had, mm-hmm. it was just gone. So that's an example of, you know, building something, building this thing you're so passionate about and like losing that, just, it was gone mm-hmm. like, like that in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. The one thing I got out of that was one, learn who to trust. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's the biggest thing. Mm-hmm. And two, I got a camera. Mm-hmm. I got to keep one of the cameras. Yeah. And that's when I started going to Cambodia and started doing all this other stuff and make all these awesome videos. Yeah. Um, it was a starting point, yeah. really. It was, it was mm-hmm. I sure I started 12 years ago, but like that was the one like, ah, forget what uh, Deadpool would have been calling it here. It was a pivotal event, though, mm-hmm. within my universe. <laughs> that was, if you didn't have that, I wouldn't be where I'm at. Sure. You know? Well, I think it's important for any viewer that's made it far long enough to, to listen to the stuff that uh, it's important to understand that it's not going to be a slam dunk home run, you know, instantaneous win when you start a business. Sometimes you have to understand 
and you'd be you'd be your own problem if you were to assume that you were going to grow faster than organizations tra- traditionally expand. And on top of that, um, I like to I like to kind of always compare our growth to the growth of a human, right? You know, animals. You know, they they evolve or not evolve. They mature faster than humans do, but humans have. Uh, things that animals don't, which is they also, instead of working off of instinct, they work off of emotion, right? And there's a lot of things that happen in the human growth cycle where you're starting to learn and understand your emotions and how those play into your decisions and, and how you want to become and uh, like who do you want to become, right? So as a business, I always look at us for the age that we are. And if we're five, we're just about to the sixth year, right? I have a six-year-old son, right? I know as a business, we are as far along in our growth as an organization as he is as growing into an adult, right? And he's testing boundaries regularly. He's not understanding his emotions, right? He's running into problems that he doesn't know how to deal with, and he has to find um, advice through mentors and supporters and so on and so forth. And he has to be open to receiving constructive criticism, right? And in your growth as an organization, you need to have enough um, humility, to understand you are not farther along than you actually are. You know, our success is apparent, right? Uh, the success level is shown through what happens in your life and the way that your band grows and how many, for us, how many tr- trucks you have and how many members of the team you have and how, how high your payroll has grown and stuff like that. But we're only six years in, right? We're still tripping over our shoelaces. We're still learning how to tie our own shoes, right? So I don't, I don't say that as a way to deter you know, homeowners and things like that, we've more than perfected the insurance restoration process. But in terms of the inner workings and finding things that just click, you've got to stumble on a few things here and there. You've got to hit roadblocks. Sometimes you've got to find out that you did, you know, you trusted the wrong person and you've got to go through the heartache. I learned from one of my mentor that I talked about last time, uh, the three most important lessons that you can learn as a human being that mold who you are are all formed out of loss, right? The loss of your first love, right? Because you realize what you did wrong to let the, you know, the, the white buffalo or, or the great white buffalo <laughs> trope on down, right? The loss of a loved one because you realize that you, you know, you should have been more active and you should have been more on purpose with the time that you did have with them. And then the loss of your, your the, the first time you lose a job, Right. Because if it's a a job that you liked anyways, right, because you learn, you know, you just lost all of your growth there. So through loss comes adaptation. It comes strength through it's just like breaking down muscles in the body. You know, when you lift weights, what you're doing is tearing muscle fibers. When you're building a business, you need to tear things down to build them back better. Right. Yeah. 100%. 100%. So, no, I agree. Um, so, yeah, I think I really want to jump into some of the marketing and branding side of things, um, really say um, and just talk with you about it, just because I've been helping with, with it for a long time. Um, and it's obviously something that's very important to me. Um, I wanted to really get a rougher idea of what your generalized approach to marketing um, a brand means to you. But don't even think about it like as a roofing company per se. Just what does it mean to you to market and brand your company that is you it's your company 100 mm-hmm. percent. Mm-hmm. your thing roofing aside what does it mean to you mm. um i mentioned on the last one that uh, the name i already knew what the name was going to be okay right um i wanted to name the gym that i was intending to learn how to create yep. and build pride fitness pride is very important right so the logo and the name had to be in sync with each other for exactly what we wanted and that's what i needed the population to see and the reason we called it pride and the, way, the reason I wanted to call it pride was because pride means lots of things, right? Um, pride in self, pride in your community, pride in whatever, right? And it's, 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 it's just, it's a powerful word, right? So it gives power, it gives, you know, the impression of confidence, so on and so forth. Um, but what it also means is, you know, if you're thinking about it the way that we've created the word, now obviously there's been more use of that word, um, you know, in today's day and age, that's a little bit different than our purpose behind pride. Um, no, no, I'm not, not trying to make any jokes or anything like that. I'm just saying with the way that we purposed the name, what we were talking about was, uh, teamwork, 
right? Team before self. The, the If you think about a lion pride, right? A, a lion by itself, although it's a powerful creature, can be overtaken by three hyenas, right? Because they're attacking it from all different directions. If they get three different legs, they take it to the ground. One of them gets the neck. You know, it's, it's hard to fight off three different things. But if you have a pride of lions, it's unstoppable. It runs the jungle, right? Or the savanna or whatever you call it. Like there is no more powerful force than a team working together, right? So I needed that name. I needed the power. I needed the, you know, charisma that's behind it. Um, and it was, you know, specifically for with lions, I, I created the very first logo um, by, <laughs> actually, it's funny, I, um, I wanted to get a tattoo of a lion. So I looked up about 100 different, you know, not, not 100, probably thousands of different lions. I actually still I have a tattoo. It's not the same one. But anyways, I had the, a stencil version of a lion. And it was kind of like, a, it was the black and white version. So it was the what do you guys call that? The opposite of, um, Oh, um, yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it was ac ac accenting the dead space rather than the logo itself and, or not rather than the contrast. Yeah. The contrast. Yes, right. Sir. So anyways, I took that picture and I got the font that I wanted and I said, this is it. And then I sent it off to, um, my ex business partner and he gave it to a very creative person and uh, it came back more pretty than, you know, I thought that it was going to be. Um, but anyways, it, it, that's, it needed to be, it, mm -hmm. I needed people to understand we will work as a team. And if you work with us, you become part of that team. Yeah. That needed to be inculcated into the, the ter like into the, you know, just into the name. Yeah. Right. I was told from my, my mentor that every good business um, needs to have what they do inside of the name. Right. So like Pizza Hut. You know what they do. It's pizza, right? But there's a lot of people who get really creative with the words and stuff, and you, they don't grow as fast because people don't really understand what it is that they do until they've reached out to you instead of it just being part of your name. So it's pride, right? The team who's here to do roofing and construction for you, yep. right? Yeah, the first, uh, my first company that I talked about earlier mm -hmm. uh, was actually in here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking about it right now. Like it was, it was like creative and great in its own regard, but like you'll hear it now, and I'm, you're gonna be like, "What?" <laughs> so it was a Latin-based name. Mm -hmm. So it was already out there, mm -hmm. uh, but it was Concilium Brand Marketing. Concilium. Concilium. It was, <laughs> but it was spelled very specifically C O dot Concilium. Because <laughs> I was like Colorado Community Connection. Yeah. Great. Yeah. <laughs> um, wow. It. We had a lot of conversations about that one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we ended up changing it uh, when we before we just before we merged into uh, Concilium Media Co. Mm -hmm. uh, to work with the you know mm -hmm. the, the video guys and everything like that. But that I mean, your guys's logo is the reason I signed on really more than anything. I yeah. was like, that is some sexy little lion <laughs> over there. That guy, that's a little badass <laughs> little thing yeah, right the, there the, that I get to play with yeah. and like <laughs> vectorize and do all the stuff that you know marketing guys do. Yeah. Very excited. <laughs> yeah. It, the logo, I mean, every little thing in a business you kind of cherish and you hold dear, right? Like well, the logo was really cool because it wasn't just that it was made by some guy that made it pretty. It, the, that same guy that made it pretty, it's not as pretty as it is now. You've, you've taken it and created it better, right, and, and whatever. But like when he had it, when it first came out, what was cool about it is this, the, the guy that did it was Evander Holyfield's son. Uh, I don't know if any, but you know. The name rings a bell. I feel like I've heard that <laughs> name before. I'm sure most people reading it is Ann Vander Holyfield, one of the only people to ever beat Mike Tyson in a fight. Oh, right? shit. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, like, um, but anyway, well, sports sports people don't roast me at the stake if that if I said that wrong. But anyways, very prominent fighter. Boxer in the in the nineties, um, just just a badass human. But it was his son that created the logo. That's which, awesome. So it even has its own little twist to it. And and there was more to that name that I don't normally say out loud, um, but I like the name Pride specifically, uh, like what it does inside of me. Um, of the seven deadly sins in the world, the one I struggle with the most is pride. Right, I have a really difficult time um, admitting that. I'm not the smartest person in the room, admitting yeah. that I'm not the best at, at something. I have a really hard time, you know, putting my pride aside and allowing um, 
other people to come into my life and help me become better. And so I was challenging myself by continually reminding myself of the name. So I'll give a little tidbit behind it there. But yeah, fair, fair. There's there's more stories to everything, and you learn as you are, you know grow and develop businesses that there's there's history. There's every history in every corner, every nook, every cranny, every piece of paper. There's history there, and it's it's something that you cherish. Yeah, one hundred percent. I would love to get into the next session, but I need to uh, invite our other co-host back on up All to right. get into the next session, which is about building a team which I'm not great at because I'm the only person on my team besides my wife. That doesn't make any difference. <laughs> All right, JD. <laughs> Diesel. Do beep. That didn't work. <laughs> the snap's broken. I don't know how that happened. Uh, that's so funny. And we're back. All right. So now we're going to go into specifically building a team. So... Some of the initial insights to hiring, managing, and motivating the team that we had during our growth phases, and <laughs> how we've maintained or evolved company culture uh, as the business has expanded. Okay. <laughs> All right. So start with the, f- the, the first team. Yeah, let's start with uh, the insights into like the initial hiring, the first people that we we brought into the fold sure um i mentioned on the last video um that was one of our biggest sticking points one of our hardest uh hurdles to climb was getting other people involved so we had become very sick well on the scale that we were at you know we were we were paying our bills and not falling behind as you know a tandem duo and stuff like that and we knew that in order to scale the business, we needed to have more more bodies. We needed more people and, and to replicate ourselves within those people. And so we started our first campaigns to, uh, you know, start bringing people in. And we tried first with hiring outside um, Craigslist and uh, Monster and things like that. And... Uh, when people came in and they found out you don't have an office and that you have very low, you have no ability to pay them a salary, it's 1099, and they find out you're only a few months old and stuff like that, nobody was interested. So we went to the next route, which was you know, obviously um, advised against, but we had to, which was going to our networks. And so I reached out to... We needed specifically sales personnel, so I reached out to some of my very good um, connections, good friends from the gym industry, and I asked them if they wanted to make a, a life-changing move, get out of the gym, out of the, off the blacktop, and start making you know higher sums of money for the amount of effort that they were putting in. And we, you know, we 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 had to sell it. Like I said, we had to sell it. We had to give them the whole dream, the vision, the steps. We had to understand that inside out, upside down, backwards, forwards. We needed to know exactly where we were going and why we were going there, and we needed to tell them with such confidence that they rode that confidence wave, and uh, they did. So I brought in three or four, uh, three or four of my friends from the gym industry uh, that I was able to get them bite on it, to bite on it, um, and understand that this is a this is a growing thing. They're part of the foundation. They're part of uh, something new and and, and 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 inspiring, and they they should be a part of this. You should get on this train. Um, my ex business partner also did the same. He did that through. Um, um, relationships that he had from when he lived on the East Coast and people that had traveled out here, so people who knew him when he was a kid, um, knew his family, things like that, people who were, you know, they trusted us and our integrity as people, our quality, our, you know, you know, just our motivation in general. They saw that we were onto something, and we convinced them to jump in. So our first, yeah, our first team was all salespeople, um, we took care of all the back end stuff ourselves. They were out there in the front lines, and we were out there with them as well. You know, we we're working two or three jobs at a, at a time, and and uh, yeah, we convinced some friends to uh, buy into a vision. Yeah. And then the other part of that is the maintaining the team and the evolving the team. So as we have 
you know, we've in this episode we've talked about it a couple of times of like the grow, regress, grow, regress. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the biggest part of that when we talk about that, I feel like has been the team of like I think you and I have joked about it on multiple occasions of like we've been like, this is the team. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then some things have happened and we've been like, well, it was, it was a team. Yeah. Not necessarily, you know, it's hard to say that, that there was a team. We have an amazing core, like we talked about in, in our people that have been here quite a while, but it's interesting to me because I've never faced the same level of in and out that I think you face specifically in like, if we're talking about entrepreneurial entrepreneurship that you face inside of like a sales organization. Mm-hmm. And that's been a real struggle for me because I'm not used to that, not revolving door, but uh, the more consistent exodus of specifically with salespeople and like, uh, I, I know that that's a pretty pretty standard thing, but it's kind of been a thing f- for us of you build a core and you f- pour a lot of time in, and then for whatever reason, that core changes. And we've had some really amazing teams in the few, the, it's crazy to see nearly six years, but in the six years that we've been here, mm-hmm. we've had some really, really fun teams, and we're constantly evolving that team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, anybody who's a part uh, is part or has been part of a sales organization, you understand going into it and while you're there, well, if you don't understand, I'll explain it to you. Salespeople are fickle, right? It's, uh, you know, they're by nature very fast-paced uh, people. They are very opportunistic people. Um, I mean, that's what makes them good at sales is finding that gap and making sure to insert themselves there so that they can be the person that they say yes to, right? And in the midst of that, they're always chopping it up with, you know, clients and they're learning about clients' um, lives and what they do. And sometimes they get on the better side of that client and they get, you know, like, hey, I've got greener grass over here, you know, that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. Like there's, it's, it's just understood that, you know, in a recruiting class of, of salespeople specifically, you're probably only going to, you know, if you brought in three people, you're probably going to only hold on to one of them, right? And that's just because some of them, you know, they plant their seeds and they intend to grow here and they don't let the, the, the other things, you know, bother them. And then, you know, two of them, never really planted the seed. They were just here for the time until the wind picked up, you know? And so, but um, as far as like growing the team and maintaining things, what we've always stayed or set as foundational, it's just this will never change, is that the company is always going to make decisions based off of what's best for our employees and then what's best for our customers and then what's best for our business in that order. Right. Now, I mentioned this a long time ago um, when I was talking about conscious capitalism, but we want to be a stakeholder centric business. And what that means is every time we make a decision, it's not it's not specifically looking at the bottom line numbers and just trimming fat. That's what you know, that's what our organization organizations will do when the only thing they're focused on is the stakeholder make or excuse me, the stockholder making more money off of their stock and inside of those businesses. It generally always has incredibly high turnover rates in all departments, not just in sales departments. There are people that are not happy. There's not a lot of camaraderie. There's not a lot of engagement. There's no loyalty, right? Um, We've always been able to create great loyalty. So even with the people who decide that they're going to take that greener grass route, at least the perceivably greener grass route, um, it, it never, it's never an easy choice for them. It's always like, you guys have treated me so well. I love this team. There's, you know, it's always so inviting to be here, so on and so forth. But this just seems like the opportunity that I need to take. And if I don't take it, um, I'm going to regret it. And I'm not here to stop anybody from, you know, living out their dreams. If that fits the mold of what their dream is, then I'm just thankful that I was part of their professional growth in the first place, right? So I don't take it to heart when those types of things happen because I understand that the reason that the core people are always always here, they're always persistent is because 
they they set those they planted deep and their grew, grew, their roots grew wide and strong right and so um, culturally I think the decisions that you make can be reflective in when what type of culture that are, that's there and then I always you know that's the, the, uh, acknowledgement and continued um, affirmation of you know people's growth and those types of things people want to be noticed right people don't want to you know become just a piece of furniture inside of the office. They want to be noticed. They want to be no. They want. They want to. They want their values and their skills to be, you know, um, you know, not glorified but exemplified and put in front of the others. And they want the hand claps and they want the the spiffs and they want the things right because they want to know that they're a they're they're an actual integral part of that organization. And if you can keep your head on straight as you're building your teams, that's the most important part. People will come and they go. It just is what it is. But in order to keep people longer and to keep and create a team where they're they're literally, you know, I used to I used to say that the the um, the real character trait of a true leader is if he was driving a gas truck into hell, um, would you get inside and ride into the dust with him? Right. Like, is that is that is that the type of leader or the type of business you're a part of? Because it's not if it's not and nobody's willing to ride in that, you know crazy rig into a hot place you just you're just not going to make it very far you're just not as we've talked about the team and these like that writing into hell analogy um the other one that we've we don't say it as much anymore the ex-business partner really was um the bigger part of this mantra but the burn the boats um and so when I, when I first started here, I had my own set of things going on. And I think at the two-week mark, I started as a canvasser. I was like, this, this just isn't for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I had some other stuff going on, and I came to you guys, and I was pretty transparent about that. And the yourself and your ex-business partner were like, well, we have this need. We will have this need shortly if you can hold on. There's some things that we can have you do until then, but this is a need that we're potentially going to have, mm-hmm. and we really would like you to fill that role. Mm-hmm. And we've done that for multiple members of our team. Mm-hmm. Of started specifically as salespeople that are now not. Yeah, was well, um, the acronym is EOS. It's a book. It's called the Entrepreneurial Operating System, right? And the idea, the entire—I mean, I'll give you clip note, cliff notes right now. The idea of that book is find the right seat on the bus, right? Sometimes people come in with aspirations to be a salesperson. Turns out they're more of an operational brain, right? They need to be fit in the background to make sure that this connects with this all the time, right? And that just needs to be their job, and so. You know, it's an, if you, that that's probably a good thing to focus on when it comes to building the team is the the I guess the foundation or the the why behind your hiring practices is really is really important. The why, like why you hired this person, doesn't always have to be that they came in with a resume this thick of all of their accolades. It needs to be their character, right? If this person's character and their personality will fit in this organization, and and then I want to then I then I want to bleed into you and I want you to bleed back into me. Let's grow together, right? So yeah, it's it's important when we hire people on, we need to know that A, they're gonna be fun to hang out with because we're gonna see them almost more than our family members sometimes and t- depending on the type of time of the season, sometimes more than their family members, right? So you, you, we want them to be here. The personality makes the place better. And on top of that, they have character and that, that, that shows through the way that they're conducting themselves in the interviews and the way that they're responding and stuff like that to essentially you know you can count on this person and you know this person is willing to put in the work to become good at whatever that they're going to do. You get those things right, you know, you're going to be just fine. So I, I, th- I think that's been – and that's part of the reason that I've stuck around is – when we talk about the team and moving people into the correct places, that's been huge because there's been times when we've had that really hard conversation of like, we love having this person in the building. Mm-hmm. 
they are failing because this isn't the role for them. Mm -hmm. And we transitioned and made the team, in most cases, better mm -hmm. by moving people into those other roles and have some really amazing people in roles that they did not initially start in. And I think that that's been really powerful for us. We, I really honestly believe that we have one of the most amazing teams. So, and that makes what we're talking about that much more important mm -hmm. of, like you said, I see you guys, the people we work with, more than I see my family a lot of the time. We, it's, there's a joke that there's three people leaving the building at the same time every day, and or the last three people leave the building most days, and it's a combination of myself, you, and John. And it's, depending on the day, it's any one of us could be leaving at any other time, but it's always, you know, the three of us, because of what we do for the organization, mm -hmm. and so I see you guys a lot more than I see my family. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I, um, yeah I've, I've, I've tried to learn how to press stop and not blur the boundaries of work and home and that kind of stuff. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's important. It's important if you're going to, if you're going to run this business and, you know, and not let the business run you, you have to build a team of people you trust people that you want to be around, people that want to share and exchange ideas, people who can critically think and work on their own, and people who are not afraid to ask you for help when they need it, right? Like it's, uh, it's very important to be in tune, do well checks, make sure we know what's going on in each other's lives. We don't have to be best friends, although some of us have turned into really good friends, but it's, we need to be able to trust each other, and that starts in the hiring process. And, but, and, 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 and then even more deep than that comes down to those foundational pieces of hiring people, which is find out if their personality will fit in your organization and find out if their character is worthwhile enough to build with you. Absolutely. So kind of the last thing, what was, what were some of the key milestones, the either revenue targets or launching new, um, relationships with uh, we talked about earlier being pursued by vendors instead of chasing mm -hmm. um, or achieving that recognition of like what were some of those key milestones in this development part of what we've been talking about that you experienced that were exciting and <coughs> key milestones um hmm been a lot of good things that have happened. I don't know the right answer to this question. So um, I mentioned this as a milestone last time, but what was really fun about the way that we did it was when we finally got um, our first real standalone location instead of operating out of houses. That was a big deal. But what we did, which made it even better, was we built it ourselves. So we had Everybody in the office, you know, framing out walls and putting up drywall and we ate meals together. And, you know, it was it was really I have actually I stumbled across this in the content drive a couple of days ago. And I was like, oh, I remember that. That was a good time. You know, that was back before any of the crazy stuff really started. Like we didn't we didn't even know what problems laid ahead of us. We were so new and excited and whatever. It was really cool. But when we built our office and we made it the way we wanted to and we decorated it with all the lions and the logos and the, mo the mo like motivational posters and all that stuff and we're like this is our home like this is home you don't walk into our home you know like we're you know it's like your locker room i guess because this, it's not like a storefront it's not like a retail store where people come in all the time anyways people will come in but they don't come in all the time the office is for our people so it's like where we huddle it's where we game plan and now that we had a, a place where we could get together and shoot ideas off of each other and have a place that we called like home, it was the lion's den, you know, it was like where we, we, we kicked our feet up, we got our work done, we planned, we strategized, and then we went and executed. It was really cool. That was a big milestone. I got to talking about specifically that content drive, and we 
ran across that type of stuff, I actually got to go through that. I hadn't seen those because I wasn't here at that time. Mm -hmm. But I got to see the build out of the office and all the photos. And that was a ton of, they were a ton of fun to look at because yeah. I've only ever seen the building as it is now. Yeah. So watching the build out of the office and everyone at the, you know, I knew most of the people on the team because I started shortly thereafter. So seeing everyone in the office building out, building out our space and like seeing what it was, because mm -hmm. it's completely different from what it is now. Yeah. It, it was, it was really, it was really neat. Yeah. And so those, those were, I, I can imagine the finally having a home. Yeah. The, there's got to be a realness factor mm -hmm. on it at that point. Well, there is. Well, <laughs> when you sign a, I think over the course of three years, a $160,000 lease, you know, <laughs> there's a realness in it in a lot of different ways. You know? <laughs> but, uh, but anyways, yeah, it was like, yeah, it was like we finally made it. We got our it's a he-man woman haters club and we had women on the team right like it's like no you're not allowed in here bud you're not a pride guy <laughs> you know like you take a lot of, you take you know pun intended you take a lot of pride and it was yeah, it was really fun building it because we we designed it like we we said i want this here i want this here we're doing this you know there and i said there's history in every nook and, and cranny every corner of 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 business there's yeah, I remember smashing my finger as we put the wall in in the VP office when the crew's in right now. I remember just destroying my finger in that corner. And, you know, I remember, um, you know, having the dogs in there knock over the walls that we were trying to build. And, uh, you know, there was there was a lot of it was a lot of fun. But like there's stories and all of it. There's probably trash and there's probably blood literally in between the, the trust, you know, under the framing that we built over. I call them trusses, but framing. <laughs> But anyways, yeah, this um, there's a lot of history, and and when you get to achieve certain milestones as an entrepreneur, it just kind of makes you, it gives you this uh, warm rush, like a gold a gold glow type of thing, because it's like, you know, we don't have all of our shit together, but we got this. It's pretty fun. I think that I think that as we close and talk about you know everything we've been talking about. The next big piece of this puzzle that we're going to be covering is challenges and failures. Mm -hmm. um, and that that's what next week is going to be about for us is the, you know, in that first five years, what were our challenges? What were our failures? How did we overcome some of those things? And what it, you know, what that did for us mm -hmm. and how much stronger we are or aren't because of some of the things that we've gone through. Mm -hmm. And then I just want to, you know, uh, reach out to our audience again of like, if you guys have built a team and you've ran across things that we didn't cover or you've had similar experiences or, um, you know, just different conversations that you've had and like if you enjoyed any of what we've talked about and want to interact with us we'd love to have you interact with us we we look at the youtube comments we look at the instagram comments so we love interacting with you guys and we just would love to have you come back next week where we're going to talk about challenges and failures Eesh. well that's gonna be fun <laughs> might watch me shed a tear or two uh, yeah try to be as stone-faced as I can, but occasionally things start to make me leak. So, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, we appreciate you guys tuning in. Please like and subscribe, engage in the content, like he said, and uh, we'll catch you on the flip side. See you guys.